accepting the invitation and uh, making this interview. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, appreciate that you have traveled a long way from Coimbatore to be here. So that also shows how serious you are with your project. So we'll start. Be seated. Be comfortable. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. understand that uh, this is a project where you need to get the view of an IT professional uh, on the, the side of HR. Yes. So, um, uh, we can go one by one. Terms, yes. Yeah. So, let me ask the first question to you. So, can you tell about yourself and your experience in IT field and your involvement there? Can you please explain that? Okay. So, uh, about me, my name is Stano, Stano Ramakrishnan Thambi. I am having 28 years experience in the industry. And in this 28 years, I was mostly an IT professional, the delivery part only. But there were times when I involved only with HR also. Particularly in the area of uh, uh, campus onboarding, uh, campus selection, campus onboarding and the whole process of uh, campus training and getting them productive in projects. So this is where uh, my HR uh, areas come into picture. Also, uh, recently uh, I am doing operations part. It might be something new for you people. Operations is when uh, the combination, somebody in the delivery has to be uh, the point of contact or uh, the, uh, the, point, the touch point for HR functions, so all HR functions. It should be infrastructure, it should be HR policies, it should be inspection, uh, finance, all of them put together. So that is where, you know, I in fact I agreed to be part of this because that has given me an exposure of the whole HR process. And that is where I am. My area, if you, if I come back to your question, my area is like touch point to all HR. And I have been specifically handling HR areas in the areas of recruitment, onboarding, campus, uh, particularly campus people, training, and then you know, uh, the finance, HR finance. So these were the areas I have worked with, quite a bit area. Typical day in HR life? Typical day in HR life is almost like running a home. Uh, I would say probably mother running a home because you have to have all touch points in place. For example, the big team for which I am doing the HR operations now, uh, everything for them starting from uh, their uh, uh, so coming in and making sure that things are working for them for doing their job the whole day plus their well-being and of course uh, when there are uh, it's when you are in a big company and when there are multiple areas of touch points for a single person uh, on a daily basis uh, I will be the single point of contact so my job is if you say like for an IT professional a job is like come in the morning, there is a task and then you have to do it by evening. It's not like that for me. It's like uh, every second a job can come. It's dynamic. It's not planned. So uh, when you are an HR person, you have to be ready to take up any task that is coming on your way. Your day is not planned. You need to uh, move according to the demand rather than planning your day and getting things done. So that is one day as a child. Resource manager, please share your vision on the outsourcing process. Very good. HR function means it needs to take care of everything, but there are times when it might not be practical. There are times when you have to take external expertise. For example, a background verification in HR. Somebody in the HR of one particular company cannot do it. Uh, they will have to depend on an external agency who can do that searching, find out what is what. Another area is, say for freshers, many of the companies do an aptitude test. This is not a questions framed by HR. Some experts, external, they have. 
So that is confidential also. That doesn't. If I am an HR in my company and I know the questions of uh, aptitude test in my company, I can have uh, people of my own get into it. No. So that is where you know nobody in a in a company will be knowing what are the aptitude questions of that company. It will be totally confidential by that. So for me, outsourcing certain HR activities is a must. It is a necessity. So that's it. Next question. What are the challenges you faced as a HR manager? Okay, HR means challenge only okay? because uh, say when somebody is the doer, somebody does things for you. Uh, any issues, small things, everything will be a complaint to you. Hmm? So you should be uh, first having that broad-mindedness to accept complaints. An HR person can really get annoyed. Because if my system is not working, HR. If the internet uh, has some issue, HR. If uh, the bus was late, HR. Yeah? If this is not there, if the uh, pipe is, uh, the uh, plumbing part in the washrooms are not working, HR. It's like you know, running the whole house. Hmm? Uh, yet every time, uh, this particular thing, for even I might be doing something, and then all of a sudden another one thing comes. For everybody, their part is the first priority. Then I am having five things to do. How will I prioritize? That is the challenge. There is where you know what I say that you have to keep in mind. For example, one person is having a problem in attending a customer call. Another person is having a problem with a plumbing work, something. Here customer call has to be the priority. So it's up to me to identify which is the priority. I have to, have to attend another one first and do. So challenge is everybody's need is their priority. But then over a period of time you will understand how to prioritize and you will know how to handle it. So that is it. So my question is in general, what are the human resource policies and practices in IT industry? Okay. In general, first of all, there has to be necessary things, basic necessary things. Interview process, on induction process, finance process. Finance process is different experienced people, what and all should be the different way of induction. And of course, you know, uh, the well-being process. These are the necessary ones. Without this one company cannot work. Anything above that can be termed as additional. Some companies, people say that we have this, we have that, extra things. Other companies need not have it. So, a basic process is taking in an employee, placing the employee in the proper salary band, role, etc. And making sure the basic amenities on a day-to-day -day basis is in place. And of course, uh, the uh, discipline process. These are mandatory. All other things are bonus. Nowadays, so many well-being things are done by the HR organizations in such a way that people like companies as the way they like their homes. That much comfortness is given by HR. But basic amenities are necessary. Other things are bonus, I'll say. Okay. So one more question I want to ask you, sir. What is the core culture of IT industry, sir? IT industry is professional. Professional in the sense like uh, you need to know what you need to do that day. You should be competent. You should have the knowledge of that subject, whatever you are doing. Second thing is no sentiments. Uh, you are here and then there is a decorum that needs to be followed because it's a global industry. You have to be punctual. You need to have good communication skills in English. You need to dress appropriately. So professionalism, I'd say, is following global culture without being asked to do it. You know that without being trained to do it. You learn how to be a global human being, and then that is the culture of the of IT industry. Thank you, sir. One more question is: Share your view on selecting the employees for the company. Okay. As I uh, see, at, at aptitude, that is knowledge, 
on a particular subject is necessary. That is something we need to look, look into it. But that alone will not help because people with aptitude, lots of people are there. There are many people, so many good colleges, so many people are coming out. We are having a lot of people with good aptitude. That wouldn't help. Attitude is an important thing. Is this person manageable? That is the thing. You are having a person who knows to do the job, but can HR policies manage this person? That is very important. A seasoned HR professional uh, who has seen a lot of human beings, just by a 30 minutes interview can understand the attitude of the person. Attitude you can understand through test, examination, etc. and the CGPA of the university, etc. etc. you can do that. Attitude is human. Hmm? It's psychological. So experienced people who has seen a lot of people and who themselves are good human beings need to interview people so that attitude plus attitude is there for hiring a new person. Can you share your insights for us to get prepared to become a HR manager? Okay. Number one, you need qualification, hmm? which is already there. Okay. So, having a qualification with a decent mark sheets is necessary first. Second thing is common sense. An HR person, uh, just by what you have learned from book, is not enough. You should know what the society is all about. You should come out of your own space and understand what is there around the world. Because we all get comfortable with our own culture, our own um, existence. You are now living in Coimbatore, so you will feel like I am good here. Then a HR person should be global. If you are asked to go to somewhere else which is totally different from an area that you would like, you should get adapted there. For that you need common sense. First of all, uh, a HR person should appreciate everything. Appreciate everything around. Don't find fault. All, all human beings have the tendency of finding fault. Even if somebody who is living in a village here goes to America can find a fault with something in America. Oh, here things are like this. You can say that. That's a human thing. Every human being is like that. But a HR person has to come out of it. Everything in this world has some goodness. Because we are all too small. This world is very big. So the only thing I'd say, apart from the qualification, understand that we are all too small. This world is very big. If that awareness is there in you, you can make a good HR. Because HR is the person who needs to bring the human out of a human being. For that first, the HR person has to be a human. Human being is there. That biologically you are a human being. But the humaneness of that human being has to come out of a HR. HR has an authority in companies. So HR is not liked that much by people who are on the ground. The moment you become a likable person, you have succeeded as an HR. Otherwise, by policy wise, you are an HR. When you become a likable person, you are an HR. So, a lot of mental conditioning is required for that. I will say, 25% of an HR is through education. 75% through observation, uh, learning and mental conditioning. Thank you, sir. Let us conclude this interview here. Mm -hmm. and again, I'd like to thank you for accepting our invitation and raising this event. Exactly. Thank you for all your insights and wonderful words. Yeah. It's a pleasure meeting you people also <clears throat> because um, finding time and you know arranging things and all are extra effort. But then you have learned a lot on what it needs to be HR yes. Yes, by this. This is the thing. That's it. And it didn't come naturally to me. I have learned from my uh, seniors. I have learned from leaders who built this. I am only sitting in a company that is built by others. How much difficult it would have been for them to build it. 
and you see a building like this, how much difficult it would have been for so many people to build it. Only because of that we are sitting together in a room like this, no? Well lit room, neat room. Huh? So that is the thing. I am too small uh, in this world. I have full awareness on that. That probably is the reason um, why I am still surviving in the industry. It's a pleasure meeting all of you. It's a pleasure meeting you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.